Well, good morning, everyone. Just want to welcome you back to Wednesday's Word. Uh, we missed last week, uh, but we were having a wonderful time of revival in Wilkes County under the Big Ten. I don't know if anybody knew about that that uh, normally watched, but we had such a great time. Uh, had four nights of revival. We see Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Actually, five nights of revival. The, the, the last night we had 18 baptisms. So it was just a wonderful time together. And so last week we didn't do Wednesday's Word because I was there. But I'm glad to be back with you this morning. I'm in a little different setting than I normally am. I'm in the, uh, the prayer chapel here on Fruitland uh, Bible College's campus. Um, they have opened their campus back up for classes, and I'm here on uh, Tuesdays and Wednesdays. And so it's just a privilege to be able to be here and to be part of this. And um, I love this little chapel. It's gorgeous inside. It's a place where a lot of young men come and do the, practice their preaching skills. On a Tuesday night, they'll take turns. Um, the students will uh, preaching. And it's just a wonderful opportunity. Uh, a lot of young guys here, a lot of older guys here, all different ages. Uh, just training and, and uh, seeking um, to, to serve the Lord. Um, so I'm excited about our next topic. And um, like every other talk I talked about, it's something most of us deal with in our lives. So let me start out by asking you a question first. Uh, when you opened your eyes this morning, when you woke up, what was your first reaction, your first thought? Just think about that for a minute. What was that? Was it a grateful thought? Was it uh, thanking God for the breath in your lungs? For your family? Uh, for your friends? For your salvation? Thanking Him that He's there with you? Was it just a grateful attitude? Or was it the opposite? Was it a negative one? Was it, uh, oh me, I've got to go to work. I've got to get up and go to work. Well, actually... You get to go to work. That should be our attitude. Um, or was it, I'm so tired. Well, maybe you should try going to bed a little earlier. Uh, I don't know. I'm just saying, what was your attitude? Was it an attitude of gratefulness toward God and all He's done for us? Or was it an attitude of negativity? Um, maybe, like, oh, i got to get up and clean the house. Well, be glad you got a house to clean. We can spin this thing either way, but God is not pleased with a, with a, a complaining negative spirit. So I'm going to ask you to spell these words with me. Call them out as I go, and you'll understand what our topic is for today. You ready? C-O-M-P-L-A-I-N-I-N-N. G. That's right, complaining. Our topic for today is complaining. And the Bible has a lot to say about complaining. So what do you complain about? What do people complain about? We complain about the traffic, about waiting in line, uh, about the weather. Uh, I heard a librarian say uh, just uh, yesterday that someone was complaining because they had to click too many times to get to an article. We complain about every, everything. The temperature outside or the temperature in the sanctuary. Some are hot, some are burning up, and some are cold. It's just, it's just a, an ongoing thing uh, that we do. And it's not good. Um, some of us even complain about other people complaining. So, so what does the Bible say about complaining? It seems to come so naturally to us. Um, we complain about everything, but Philippians, let me read to you, Philippians chapter 2, verse 14, what does it say? It says, do all things, I'll circle that word all if you're looking at that scripture, Philippians chapter 2, verse 14, it says, do all things without complaining and disputing. Uh, some of the uh, translations say murmuring. Uh, there's lots of verses in the Bible about complaining. Um, let me read another one here in Exodus 16.2. It says, In the desert the whole community grumbled against Moses and Aaron. Do you know that a, a whole generation had to die out before they could, the next generation could enter into the promised land? It kept a whole generation 
murmuring, whining, and complaining kept a whole generation from entering into the promised land. Um, God takes complaining seriously. Um, if the Bible says uh, do everything without complaining, then why do we complain? Uh, listen to this. When we grumble and when we complain and murmur, it's not really against people, but it's against God. Um, and so what are we to do? How do we handle complaining? Well, I want to give you four, I'm sorry, three things this morning. They all start with P, so they'll be easy to remember. Three simple things that will help you to overcome complaining. Um, and we'll look at those in just a second. But first of all, let's say that complaining is a universal occurrence. Wouldn't you agree? Uh, even people in the church complain. Yes, we do. Uh, when moaning and groaning become a norm in society, which we see, uh, it's time to waken up. And we are called to be bright and shining lights in our communities and where we live, places we go in this world. And you're not a bright and shining light when you're complaining. Uh, so some point, somewhere in our life, we have to get past the moaning. We've got to refuse to be moaners and complainers and whiners. Uh, and see the good things that God has done. To constantly complain is a sin. Now we all know those people who we we are with or gather with that constantly complain. It's all negative. And it's just, it sucks the life out of you. And that does not honor God in any way when we complain. So I want to give you three things. First of all, when you feel yourself starting to complain, pause. Just pause. Uh, maybe you're sensing your grumbling or you're sensing your complaining. I would suggest maybe that's the Holy Spirit speaking to you, telling you, hey, quit the grumbling. Or he's letting you know that you're grumbling. And when that happens, just pause. Um, take a moment to ask God, um, is my conversation being uplifting? Uh, is it encouraging or is it um, the opposite? Just take a minute and pause and think about what you're saying or about what you're about to say even. Um, secondly, I would say once you've paused, you felt that conviction from the Holy Spirit, then I would say pray. You pause and then you pray. Um, and ask God, do I have a complaining Spirit. Um, actually, complaining is a spiritual issue um, and it requires a spiritual warfare. And so we need to pray and ask God, Lord, help me not to complain, but help me to be grateful uh, because you have blessed me richly. Um, did you have food on your table this morning? Uh, did you get a good night's rest? Uh, did you have a shower this morning? Um, were you able to? Uh, pick up a phone and make a phone call to your family member? Um, did you have a job to go to? Um, do you have family members in your household with you? Um, so many things that we can just go on and on about being grateful for. So pause, pray. When you pray, pray with thanksgiving. And then pursue gratefulness. Pursue God. Uh, we have so much to be grateful for, especially our salvation, especially that we know the one who has given his life for us, the one who left the portals of heaven and took on flesh and lived here on earth a perfect life because we could not and died for us, took all our sins upon himself and died for us. How can we not be grateful? Look what's waiting ahead for those who have put their trust in the, in the Lord Jesus Christ. It's a home in heaven with all perfection will be. But while we're waiting on that, we need to have a grat an attitude of gratitude, an attitude of gratefulness, not an attitude of whining or complaining. It does not honor God, and it does not help others. Yes, it's okay to speak up against uh, the wrongs, um, 
but let's not be a complainer or a moaner or a whiner. Uh, but instead, let's be an uplifter, an encourager. Let's be a bright and shining light as the Lord has called us to be. Um, I hope today is a, from this day, this point forward in the day, it's a good day that you'll not complain or whine, but you'll uh, feel yourself starting to do that, yet you'll pause, and then you'll pray, and then you'll pursue great things with God. Pause, pray, pursue the Lord all day. And that will help you to overcome complaining. So thanks for listening in. I'll be back with you next week about a different topic. But first, let's pray together and uh, about complaining. And you guys will be free to go. And I hope you have a fantastic day. Lord, we love you. We praise you. We thank you, God, for all the things that we have to be grateful for. I look outside these windows and I see a beautiful blue sky. I see the trees that are starting to turn. I hear children playing in the background. God, so many things to be thankful for. I woke up with breath in my lungs um, from a good night's rest. Lord, I woke up um, knowing that you're there with me. Woke up uh, knowing that I have a family uh, who loves me. God, I, I have so many things to be grateful for. Woke up knowing that I have friends that you've blessed me with. God, I could go on and on. But most of all, I woke up knowing that, God, I had um, a home in heaven, that you granted me salvation through your Lord uh, Jesus Christ. Um, so much to be grateful for, Lord. So help us, God, every day uh, to be grateful and not to be complainers, uh, not to be whiners or moaners, but to be bright and shining lights for you because uh, you say a cheerful, cheerful heart is like a medicine. Uh, so Lord, help us to be cheerful and help us to lean on you. And it's in the name of Jesus we pray. Amen. Guys, have a great day. Uh, be cheerful, be encouraging, be grateful, and no complaining. All right, talk to you next week. Have a great day. Bye-bye.